Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So I finally got a hold of a Parrot Swing. I've been wanting to review one of these for a while um, because it just looks so cool how it's a vertical takeoff quadcopter. And while you're flying, press a button and you can get it into uh, different pitches of airplane horizontal flight mode. So you kind of get the uh, both worlds. You kind of get a quadcopter style flyer and also a plane style flyer all in one. So I've been really um, anxious to, to review this. And it's so cool because look at the, the way it looks too. It's just got this really neat kind of X-wing look to it. And um, it's just a very simple craft. It's a you know brushed craft. It's not going to have any kind of brushless power, but it still should be fun. This is the um, version that comes with the controller. There's two versions. There's one version that comes with just the parrot swing and you have to use your phone um, then there's this version that comes with the controller which you can also mount your phone up to and kind of have both worlds it has telemetry it's transmitting um, through the phone Wi-Fi from the craft so you can have some readings on um, battery power and stuff while you fly without further ado we'll start with the unboxing don't forget I will have the links down in the description to this guy so click on that link to see more specs on it and also what the current pricing is but let's go ahead and start unboxing it okay so just opening it up and we're greeted with a couple of more boxes so we have this smaller box to the right which is the controller see that there we'll delve into these in just a second and here's the main parrot swing box and here we go so two boxes let's go ahead and open up the parrot swing first all right so parrot does a pretty good job at packaging their stuff up just a protective sleeve there and look at this guy really neat looking it's almost got a face looking at you right when you pull it out of the box so we've got the parrot swing instruction manual and it looks like a little box with let's see what this is real quick looks like uh, extra propellers a one set of extra propellers and this looks like a battery 3.7 volt 550 milliamp hour proprietary little battery there so check this thing out so it is feeling just a little bit flexy where the wings attach to the main body but they are braced pretty well they've got these plastic skeleton frame braces on the top and the bottom white and black and uh, here's the motors you can see how the motors are angled at a pretty interesting angle down and also up so it's going to be you know quadcopter mode like this looks like we might lose a little bit of efficiency because they are angled so much but I guess they felt that that was kind of um, the best angle to put them at for the both of, uh, best of both worlds on quadcopter and plane flight. So that was the engineering behind it. And the midsection is pretty neat looking. It's like we've got two front LED headlights there. It's looking really nice and the top just white and black. And there's a little battery clip. And on the back, this is interesting, so there is actually a sonic sensor and a vision sensor on the back when you're in quadcopter mode. There's a little micro USB port there for uh, charging as well, it looks like. So when the craft is in this mode, just being a quadcopter and you're flying like this, it's actually going to be using those bottom sensors, the vision and also the um, sonic sensor so that it can kind of sense the ground and maintain its height and position. So we'll see how that works in the flight test. But pretty simple, just this EP foam and it's got a brace. This looks like a little carbon fiber rod here or maybe even fiberglass or graphite rod just bracing the wings. One brace in between the motors just for a little bit more rigidity. And the battery looks like it's just gonna slip in just like this with the wording on the bottom. And then you have the, um, there's a little tab here on the top so that when you push it in, it kind of clicks in there just like that and you're ready to go okay so there's the swing and this of course is the version that came with the controller let me pop this open we'll inspect the controller and then we'll get it all hooked up and fly it all right here we go so once you get those that tape opened up here we go so here's the controller and its little cardboard box 
And this is gonna be the phone mount here. Another little mini box. And it looks like there is a instruction manual all the way at the bottom. It looks like it's just thick because there's all these different languages. It looks like there's five, five or so different languages. And let's see what's in this box that came with the controller. There we go, packed in there nice and tight. So just a standard micro USB cable. Plug into like a laptop, cell phone, or you know, back a little battery charger. And here it is, the controller. So an interesting looking controller, of course you have two sticks, and this is gonna be altitude hold because the left stick is springing to the middle. Looks like it's pretty solid and well done. I'm kind of liking it. Um, you've got your buttons here, A, B, one, two, and then a launch and land button it looks like. Of course, altitude, throttle, um, yaw, pitch and roll here on the right stick. Trigger here, trigger there, and then two triggers here and here. So wow, very similar feeling to like an Xbox controller. It does feel very high quality. Um, it's got some weight to it and the plastic is really well done. It looks like the tooling was exceptional on this controller. It feels like, um, you know, one of those expensive $50 video game controllers. Micro USB there on the bottom so we can charge that up. And this one actually has the power button right here. So on the top there, you see how you push it and it's blinking green looking for the craft. You can push and hold it and it should turn off. And let's have a look see on how this cell phone bracket actually goes in. So you can see here that we have this tab in the top of the controller. So just push the bracket down in. You're gonna hear kind of a click and a snap. And then on the back of the controller, this thumb screw that's already here is actually just gonna screw uh, right in Screw that in nice and tight, and there you go. If you're gonna use your cell phone, this is a spring-loaded guy. Feels good, it's got like a rubber backing here. That's gonna grip in your phone and rubber on the top and the bottom as well to really grip in nicely. Okay, so let's get it kind of connected to the phone here. Here's how the phone slides in to the controller. And what we wanna do is um, download the Free Flight Mini application from the App Store, if you're Android or Apple. And what Parrot's saying is you need to first turn on the drone. So we need to plug the battery in really quick, just slip it in until it clicks in, and then you wanna turn it up like that, make it facing the sky on a flat surface. And then you're supposed to start your um, application up, allow everything. There's some legal information, of course, you gotta go through and let's see how it goes. So this is connecting through Bluetooth. So, okay, it found it. So as long as your Bluetooth is on, it looks like it found the swing. And I'm just gonna click on it. Sorry about the kind of smeared up swing. There we go, or the screen. Okay, connecting to drone. And we got a check mark there. And there we go. Needs to update, I guess, if it's required to update. So let's just try an update. Let's check for updates. It's gonna check version. Do you wanna update? Yeah, let's just go through an update so you guys can see how that all works out. So I am connected also to my Wi-Fi at my house. So make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi or your data um, network is connected. So I'm gonna let this download. It looks like it's gonna take a little while. So I'll skip ahead when this is done and we'll continue on. Okay, wow, that took a while. So you can see here it's at 99%. Um, it says sending file. That took 500 seconds to do that. Um, five seconds per percent. Now it's processing the update. Over in the bottom left here, we can actually see it's going from version 1.017 to 2.55. And the drone should be rebooting now. I see the red eyes are flashing. Okay, so that took another good couple of minutes for the um, green eyes to start blinking again. They went through a series of um, orange and stuff blinks, orange and red series of blinks. And now it looks like the swing is trying to reconnect there. There we go, so it looks like it's connected. And I'm not gonna do any more updating that. Give yourself a good like 20 or so minutes to do an update if you're going to. 
Anyway, uh, we can see that we're down to 35% now, but I just want to go over the control setup. So it says not to uh, start up the controller yet. You want to just do your phone connection first, make sure that's on, then start your controller. So I'm pushing that parrot button on top. We're seeing the parrot blink there. So you can either fly the parrot with just your cell phone or the controller. So if you wanted to just fly it with the cell phone, you just press start and you have the on-screen controls here. Um, if you do want to control it with the controller, you press this controller connection here. It looks like it's not connected. Okay, drop down menu, there we go. So I forgot to press the drop down menu. So you have to press on that drop down menu, click the fly pad that shows up, and there we go. So this is interesting. This is where you're gonna set up your controls. And this is great because it's reminding me quite a bit of the Parrot Disco and the, um, the Parrot Bebop quadcopter and plane, very similar app. So you can actually just set up um, every single button, customize it, what you want it to do. So I think I'm just gonna leave it stock and uh, we'll see how it flies. Okay, cool, so I'm just gonna take off real quick. I only have like not very much percentage left, 11%. <laughs> but let's just see if it lets us take off. I'm just gonna hover here and uh, we'll see how it does real quick before we get out there and fly it. So. You wanna press start here, and it knows we're in fly pad mode since this is connected. And I'm just gonna press this um, launch button here one time. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that hover. I'm gonna push forward a little bit so you guys can see it. Wow, it's really good at just locking itself with its, um, with its sonic sensors and it's downward vision sensor. This is totally hands off, look at this. Wow, okay, cool. So really good use of its um, ground sensing for hovering. So this is gonna be great. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press that um, landing button again. I'm just letting it land there on the floor. And this thing's gonna be awesome. So let me recharge everything up. This thing's almost dead. And we will go out there and do our flight test. Cool, let's go fly. All right guys, so we're here with the swing at the park and let's see how this thing does with the fly pad controller. All right, so with the controls, let's see if we can just take off here by pressing uh, this button here. And there she goes. So keep in mind guys, I got some wind coming from this direction. It's actually going like this at about maybe three miles per hour, three to five. And there's its ability to just hold its its um, position in grass here using the optical flow camera on the bottom and also the sonic sensor. So that's actually really good. It don't, it's almost like a GPS lock. But of course, if you get a little higher, it's gonna um, go out of that ability on that function and then it's probably gonna just uh, drift around. So we only have 80%, so we better hurry up here. And here we go. So this is our yaw rate here. And uh, it's doing pretty good. Full pitch forward. That's how it's flying. So we can fly it just like a regular quadcopter. Kind of neat, flying around. And look at that, trying to fight the wind in this mode is really tough. I'm full pitch forward. And now the wind's coming from that direction. It's very uh, variable right now. And you can see how going back with the wind is really fast. But then when we try to full pitch forward, really slow fighting that wind. So that's kind of how it is with a wing, winged craft like this. Anyway, 65% already, we are dropping quick. I brought a little charger, so I may have to recharge this until we get done with this. Let's see, I kind of forget what the buttons do, but let's just press the left trigger. There we go. So this is plane mode number one, I think where you're just gonna turn it and it's just gonna keep flying forward. Look at that, trying to fight the wind. Let's press it again on the left trigger. Oh, okay, so that's back to quadcopter mode. Left trigger, and then we're gonna click the right trigger. I'm trying to remember what our different plane functions are. Two, oh, that just flipped it around, okay. So I'm pressing button two and it's flipping it around. And one is flipping it the other way, okay. 
All right, let's get it together before we lose control of it. <laughs> All right, let's bring it on back. Whoa, what's that doing? Whoa, it just did a flip. That was cool. So the A button does a flip. Okay, we want to bring it back to us. So now I'm flying towards me. I think I'm in um, quarter turn mode. Okay, let's fly on back. I'm trying to remember how to get it into more of a pitch in plane mode. Because I am in plane mode. I can't seem to get it into the different plane modes here. Let's see. Uh, clicking the right stick. Oh, okay, yeah, I think it was one of these triggers down on the bottom. So I was clicking the top right triggers. Okay. There we go. Okay, well, that's what it is. So the bottom right triggers are going to get you into more of a um, plane mode. And that looks like it's the max plane mode there. You see how it's pitched all the way forward there and you can just fly like a plane so I'm just pitching actually rolling to the right and left and steering it here now the winds really coming at my back it's maintaining its height pretty good we're already at 23 percent geez when you're going with the wind it's really feels good though or with the wind to the side of you it's cruise on by Wow, it gets really quiet when you're in plane mode right bottom trigger pressing let's get a little closer press it now oh I think that's the maximum plane mode okay press it again okay so I'm maxed out now if I pull the left trigger on the bottom one time okay so that lessened the plane flight mode you see how it's pitched up a little more let's press it again to the left trigger and that's we're almost in full quadcopter mode one more time and now we're in full quadcopter mode. Now we can just fly it like a full quadcopter mode. We got like three rates. So now we'll just like hover here until we press the right bottom trigger. One, two, three. Now we're flying it like a plane. Wow, so pretty cool. And I can see all my stuff on the screen, 10% battery. Not really much more information than that. But you can fly it nice and easy like a regular plane too. Look at this. So the cruise by, it's trying to fight that wind. Woo! And watch it go with the wind. It gets really fast going with the wind. 9% power. And I just whoa! <laughs> Don't want to run into our face. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna fly it in this mode. 7% power. I'm just going to keep flying it and let's see what happens in regular plane mode. I haven't been touching the altitude, the throttle, and it's maintaining a decent altitude by, its, by itself. Much better than a lot of the other toys I fly. So very commendable for this one. I'm just going to keep flying it in this maximum plane mode until the battery dies. You saw how it did that flip. Let's try another flip. Let's see if we can do it. I think it was A. Boom. Nope. Not letting me do it. Probably can't do it when the battery's low. Maybe we'll gain a little bit of altitude. Pressing up on the throttle all the way up. Gaining some altitude here. There we go. Now let's try A. B. Oh, that just... Okay, that turned it the other way so you can fly like upside down. B. Cool. So you can do a little switch ruse. And we'll just keep flying. We're at 5% power. Still in maximum plane mode, and I haven't touched the throttle. Look at this. All you need to do is roll it. And it just flies around. That's great. So, okay, there we go. Look at that. So it automatically went into quadcopter mode. Now it's coming down to land, so I'm going to get it closer to me. Woo! And it just shut off automatically at 3%. Great. So pretty awesome. That was actually better than I thought it would do and you know a little bit of wind and the uh, the altitude hold on this thing is unbelievable. 
even in regular plane mode you know because the the sensors are down here the optical flow and the sonic so when it's in regular plane mode it's it's at like this angle flying and it's still maintaining its altitude so it must have a really good barometer on board you know what I'm gonna do guys is before we go into the pros and cons let me recharge the battery I have a little portable battery pack here and let me recharge it while I'm doing some other stuff and I'll cut back into another flight and we'll check out some more of the buttons and stuff just so we get the full review of this guy we got a full charge back in it let's see what happens if we don't want to use our phone if we just want to use the controller line of sight without the phone I know you can control it also with the phone which I haven't done because I got the package with the controller but I think there's some other reviews online I think flying Ryan um, did a review with just the phone control so you can check out his review I'll have that linked in the description as well so you can check out he did a pretty good job at showing all the flight modes with just the the phone itself anyway we're gonna boot this up with just the controller no phone and we don't have to do anything we can just take off right away so let's just take off pressing the takeoff button again it's using his optical flow and sonic amazingly stable you know what I didn't do is a walk around on this guy um, so I want to get it to like eye level right there and let's just do a really close-up detailed walk around of it flying I think I got some spider webs on it there we go let's see what happens if we push it since it is using the ground sensors and stuff what if we push it this whoops <laughs> <laughs> it just powered off. It didn't like me getting too close. That was kind of funny. Let's try that again. Launch. You can see how it's pretty durable, so it's not going to like break if it falls out of the air. It is that high pressure foam. Kind of like the same kind of foam. I think it's similar to what the uh, Paradisco is made of. Maybe not quite as good of foam, but pretty good. It's really unbelievable to me how good this position hold is let's push it and look at that it, it actually kind of comes back to where it's locked into the ground with its sensors that's really awesome okay so what do you say we do a little bit of a range test I'm just gonna fly up a little bit and directly out that direction towards the parking lot over there straight forward and let's see how far we can get. I'd imagine it's gonna have no problem. Wow, what? Actually, that, that was it. That's like a geofence it has. Okay. Oh, that's it, wow. So it's only got about 100 feet of range. Did you see that? And it's just hovering there now. So be careful of that. Let me get a little closer to it. There we go, we're rebound, I think. Yeah, let's fly back. Okay, so for this one, keep in mind, uh, it disconnects at around 100 feet or less, maybe 75 feet even. It's good to know, it's not the greatest on range, but it's just for like a little park flyer, fun flyer. Let's try some of those options again. I know this thing has like a, a camera in it so let me try to take some pictures of us it uses this optical flow camera on the bottom to take some pictures okay so that's its little quarter turns if you press number two see how it's doing quarter turns and then if you press number one it's doing like half turns see that um, left bottom trigger okay going that way Okay, so that, that gets it into plane mode, the left bottom triggers. All right. I wanna take the pictures though, so let me get right over us and see if I can remember how to take the picture. Was it B? Nope. B is doing quarter turns again. I think A was loops, let's try A. Okay, so A does like a little trick, like a 180 or something. Okay, well I guess I uh, 
kind of forget how to take the pictures, but if I do by chance take the pictures, I'll have them pop up now. So you get an idea of what's going on. Let me try right top trigger. That might be the pictures actually. The wind's kind of blowing it. You see when you get up a certain height, it's not seeing the ground anymore and the wind's gonna blow it. So if you want it to have that ground lock, keep it, you know, within like 10 feet or so. Okay, so there we go, left trigger. I wanna get back into airplane mode and we're just gonna fly around until the battery dies. So I'm just pressing the bottom right trigger all the way as much as I can, keep pressing it, and then that gets us into like plane mode. And uh, we can go faster, slower by pushing even forward on the stick and turning. And then it's still, um, like you know, altitude and stuff is still controlled by the left stick. Pulling down will drop altitude. See how it's dropping? And then pushing up will gain altitude still. So this is how fast it flies. There's really no wind at this moment right now. There's no wind whatsoever. And this is maximum speed in regular airplane mode. I think it's already probably getting low. I felt the controller kind of buzz a bit. But for somebody, I'd say for this one, somebody that wants the ability to fly like in tight spaces, like with a, like a quadcopter type of plane, I mean, craft, <laughs> and also wants the ability to do this, fly it like a plane in wide open spaces, this is the one for you. Well, that's its maximum speed there, guys. Yeah, that's decent. This is a vertical takeoff and landing craft. And it is flying pretty good. The flight time on this will go over it when this battery runs out in just a sec. It's around seven minutes as far as what I am seeing on my, um, on the app, it shows the flights, you know. It has record of your flights and it looks like seven minutes maximum for this one. So look at this, I'm not even touching the altitude. It'll pick up a little when you're going into the wind and then drop a little when it's going with the wind. But look at that, I haven't even touched the altitude throttle on it. So really easy to fly. There we go. And then when you do get too low, look at that. It just gets you back in, Oop, pushing full throttle up and it will just land when it needs to. And that's about 3% power. So keep in mind that when it, if, if you are flying like an airplane, um, you're gonna feel your controller vibrate. The first vibration is on low voltage. You unplug this battery so we don't kill it too much. And that's the way you turn this off is you have to just pull out the battery like that. Did you see how I popped my fingernail in and pulled it out? So the first time you feel your controller vibrate, that's the first low voltage warning. You can fly around. You saw how I was flying around for a while. And the red lights or the front lights will blink red when it's in low voltage. And then the second stage is it's kind of forced landing where it gets out of plane mode. It defaults to quadcopter mode, uh, vertical landing and takeoff mode, in other words and it will just come down slowly and land. So really good sail fa uh, fail safe. Make sure when you do feel that first buzz on your controller, you're not too far away or you know over a tree or in somebody else's yard. Otherwise, um, when it does hit that second stage force landing, you might lose it in somebody's yard or in a tree. So make sure you get kind of close to you. So let's go over a little pros and cons of this guy. Um, it's definitely durable enough. It does feel a little floppy. Uh, just because of the way the, the wings are attached, you know, to the main body. Um, but it's durable enough. I mean, it's not going to break unless you like sit on it or smash it with, with an object or step on it. I could see how accidentally stepping on this might break one of these carbon fiber graphite tubes, whatever these are, these wing separators or maybe, you know, crack some of this foam, but it looks like it's gonna be durable enough for flying around, smashing into things. You know, they give you extra propellers and the propellers seem very durable and they're just pushing straight onto the motor. Um, so as far as the pros and cons go, it's a pretty short flight time, uh, up to maximum of seven minutes. If, you know, if you're flying it mainly quadcopter mode, when it's using all that power to keep itself up, you're gonna have a shorter flight time. 
But if you get into plane mode and you're flying, cruising around like this more, you're gonna be using that, the wings, the lift on the wings to um, lessen the battery consumption and use less power in the motor. So you'll get more flight time out of that. So I'd say about a maximum of around seven or eight minutes of flight time. Uh, so, you know, a little bit short, but that's okay because this is a, just a little toy. If you want more flight time, grab a couple more of these batteries. They can't be that expensive and keep a few charged up and bring them with you. And so you can have, you know, half hour of, of total flight time and have some fun in the park. As far as the controller goes, it's definitely better for somebody that doesn't only want to control it with your phone. Like I was saying, if you want to see just a phone flight, go ahead and check out Flying Ryan's channel. And uh, he he does the whole flight with just his phone. He doesn't he didn't do a flight with the uh, the controller. But as far as the controller, those of you who need the controllability, it does feel real good. And you have all these buttons and stuff. But anyway, that's the review of the swing. I know it's been out for a while, but I just really wanted to review it because it looks so cool. And um, I don't know if you guys know, but Parrot also makes like a, a drone, plane drone. It's called the Disco, the Parrot Disco. I did a lot of flights and reviews, and I just currently lost my Disco because I was pushing it a little too far. I was trying to go inter-island here in Hawaii. I'm on Maui, and I was trying to get to Kaho'olawe Kaho Island, and that was like a 25-mile flight round trip, and I just was a little bit too, um, I guess you could call it, greedy on that flight. I went a little too far and I wasn't, my altitudes weren't conservative enough. So I lost that plane. That was a, that's an expensive, more expensive one. That one's like $700 on sale right now. But this one, I think this is under a hundred bucks. And the cool thing about it is you saw how unbelievably stable it is with these ground sensors. And whatever it's using while it's flying in plane mode, the barometer, whatever it's using to keep its height, is also unbelievable. It's very good at keeping its altitude rock solid. So very impressed with the um, electronics on board here. They did a really good job. And also, when you have it connected to your phone, it tells you when it needs to do an update. Like, because it is basically a smart, it's basically a smart drone without the GPS. You know what I mean? It's like on the verge of being a little bit more of a smart drone than a toy it just doesn't have any gps in it so parrot's definitely getting better and they're releasing updates all the time when you do boot up your phone like i was saying is it'll prompt you to do an update make sure you have enough battery power to do those updates and it will make your your experience better as far as the range i was expecting a little more range with the controller but otherwise a great craft just don't fly it in any kind of wind um, the wind just had died down for that second flight there in the park and it was perfect lots of fun it was just a few miles per hour but this one anything over like five when you're trying to fly in quad quadcopter mode since it's got these big wings just like any um vertical takeoff and landing craft it's going to get blown around um, it really does try to maintain when it has that lock into the ground with these sensors but if it's got enough wind it's going to start blowing because it it just can't fight the wind so keep it in very low wind for this craft. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that review of the Parrot Swing with the controller combo. And that was informative for you. I had lots of fun with you guys. And uh, I think we did a pretty darn thorough test. And that was lots of fun. I will have the link down in the description to the swing. So check it out. Check out the current pricing and more specs on the website of where you can get this from. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Thanks for watching.